There was a girl going into the forest to pick herbal. Her name is Shireyuki. She has a small herbal shop in the Tanburan Kingdom. Becoming a physician has been her dream for a long time, and she is very happy about her choice. The prince of this kingdom, named Raj, was complacent with his handsome appearance, so he was reminded by his courtier, Sakaki. He is looking for more concubines for him, and the girl in question is Shireyuki. She has long, red hair that is very rare in this world. Because of her beauty and hair, everyone came to her pharmacy just to look at her. Suddenly, the prince's soldiers came to force her to be Prince Raj's concubine and gave her a deadline to come to the castle tomorrow. Hearing that news, she became desperate. After thinking carefully, Shiryuki decided to cut her red hair and run away from this place. After a long day of traveling, she found a house to stay in, but there was no one inside. Tired and hungry, she fell asleep. The next day, when she woke up, she heard someone's voice, then suddenly a white-haired guy passed by, and the two of them encountered each other. He was unfortunately injured, and two other people came to check on him. While they were talking, Shiryuki tried to slip away but was discovered. The white-haired guy was suspicious of her and found her strange red hair. She saw he was injured and took her herbal to help him, but he suspected she might use poison. So she hurt herself and then used herbal on her own body to prove it, leaving him stunned. He found her very interesting, and he introduced himself as Zen. Everyone went into the abandoned house to rest. Zen introduced the guy with blue hair named Mitsuhide. The blonde girl's name is Kiki. Zen asked her why she left home, and she didn't want to explain and went out for a walk. After Zen's questions, Shiryuki told Zen everything. Because Prince liked her hair, she cut it, left it for him, and then left. Zen found her very interesting and said that even though her hair made her fate determined by others, but she stood up to choose her fate. Hearing that, Shiryuki admired Zen's maturity. The two returned and noticed a basket of apples placed in front of the door. Shiryuki finds her belongings at the pharmacy and realizes that Prince Raj in her country has found her. Zen was upset when Shiryuki mentioned Raj. Raj is rumored to be the Prince of Idiot. When she was sad and picked up the apple and thought about the unhappiness of her life, Zen approached and bit the apple she was holding in her hand. Unfortunately, Zen fell to the ground a moment later. Everyone panicked and discovered that the apple was laced with poison. Shiryuki was worried because she didn't have an antidote when suddenly Prince Raj's bodyguard, Sakaki, came. Sakaki says he has the antidote, but she must go with him. She was finally taken to meet Raj. Raj gave her the condition that she must be his concubine in exchange for the antidote. After thinking for a long time, she had to accept that condition to save Zen. At that moment, Zen kicked the door in. Sekaki rushed forward, but was defeated. The other guys were also dealt with by Mitsuhide and Kiki. Shirayuki was worried about Zen's condition, but he said he was fine. Prince Raj is being overbearing because he is the prince of a country. At this time, Zen also introduced himself as the second prince of the Clarine's kingdom. Zen forced him to release Shirayuki if he did not want tension between the two countries. Prince Raj was forced to agree to this. Shirayuki asked Raj to give the antidote to Zen. She then thanked Prince Zen for helping her. Prince Zen invited her to his kingdom because fate brought them together. Realizing Prince Zen's sincerity, she agreed to follow him. Peaceful days have returned to Shirayuki. She currently lives in the kingdom of Zen and continues with her medical profession. Today she went to a herbal store, and there were many new herbs that Shirayuki did not know about. She asked the store owner about a person who came to buy herbal and found out that he was a respectable court herbalist. Only the most talented people in the medical field have such positions. And in this kingdom, talented people are highly valued. The shop owner gave her information about taking the exam to become a court herbalist. If she passed the exam, she would have the opportunity to intern at the palace. Shirayuki then went to Zen's two close friends, Mitsuhide and Kiki, but was held back by two soldiers. At this moment, Prince Zen appeared, causing the two soldiers to panic. The prince and the girl talked so freely and happily together that the two soldiers blushed. She said she wanted to go out and visit everywhere and search for new medicinal sources in the kingdom. So the prince skipped training and took her away. The two arrived at a port. She wondered why the prince often escaped from the palace and went everywhere. Zen said he also wanted to visit everywhere and learn more things that he didn't know yet. It made her very happy to know that the prince also had the same interests, as her. At this moment, it was announced that the ship was about to leave, so she quickly said goodbye to the prince and went to search for new herbs. The prince threatened the bad guys and was also quite worried about letting her go alone. Shirayuki is happy and searches for new herbals here. At this moment, she was startled when there was someone behind her, and he knocked her unconscious. Zen has returned to the palace and trains with Mitsuhide. At this time, Shirayuki woke up. She was tied up in a strange room. 
The kidnapper spoke up, startling her. He introduced himself as Mahara and was going to sell her to someone else because she had very special hair. The next day, Prince Zen came to look for her, but she still hadn't returned. He quickly rode his horse to find her. At this time, Mahara brought her food. She quickly surprised him, locked the door, and ran away. Shiryuki tried to find a way out, but the doors were locked. Mahara escaped and saw her. She hurriedly continued running until she reached the end. At this moment, Mahara rushed to catch her, but she quickly broke the candle and created a cloud of smoke. She burned paralysis herbs, and Mahara collapsed. She continued running to the second floor, opened the window, and jumped down. But she landed a bit too hard. At this time, Mahara found her. He held her and prepared to beat her, but luckily the prince arrived in time. Mahara drew his sword to attack, but was easily defeated by the prince. Shirayuki was very surprised when the prince found her. Then the two of them learned that Mahara was also a noble in the past, but times had changed. He is now an anonymous guy, and he just wants to find ways to make money. Prince Zen angrily said Shirayuki was not a tool to make money. Hearing that, Shirayuki was very touched. The two of them decided to take him to the palace for trial. When Mahara learned that Zen was the prince of this country, he was very shocked. The two of them returned safely, and Shirayuki thanked the prince for saving her. Prince Zen was also happy that she was safe. Today Shirayuki came to the palace following a message from Mitsuhide and Kiki. She wondered to the two soldiers about what the old man was holding just now. They said it was an identification card. It allows the keeper to enter and exit the palace. But Shirayuki doesn't need that because now she has Prince Zen's permission. At this time, a blonde man came and saw her with Mitsuhide. It seemed like he wasn't happy to see her being a commoner and getting special treatment. Mitsuhide asked her to help Prince Zen who was working hard to repent for all the times he skipped work. Although Prince Zen still worked hard but always thought of Shirayuki, Mitsuhide and Kiki understood this, so they invited Shirayuki to come. Prince Zen and Shirayuki happily talked to each other. A while later, the prince fell asleep because he was too tired from working for a long time. Shirayuki gently covered him with a blanket. She also sat right next to her, reading books about Herbal Herbal. Someone peeked and discovered Shirayuki. When Zen woke up, Shirayuki had already left, and she had forgotten the book. This time, the blonde man came to the prince. His name is Haruka, and he is the marquee here. He reminded the prince not to get too close to strangers to protect the reputation of the royal family. He was worried that if the prince got too close to her, she would take advantage of Zen. He wanted the prince to leave such a mediocre person, but the prince said she would be talented and wanted her to be with him, making Haruka upset. Seeing that the prince had made up his mind with his decision, Haruka left. He was dissatisfied with the prince's decision and sent someone to handle everything. Someone came and gave Prince Zen's notice to the two soldiers that Shirayuki would no longer be allowed to enter the palace because the prince had been criticized by his subordinates for this. At this time, Shirayuki was just about to enter the palace to get the book and hear everything. She hurriedly ran to find Prince Zen. She realized that the person who gave that order was definitely not Zen. Just at that moment, an arrow flew into the wall in front of her, warning her not to get close to Prince Zen anymore. She ignored it and continued looking for Zen. Haruka's subordinate saw this and wanted to finish off Shirayuki. At that moment, the prince will appear. He wondered about the arrow she was hiding when she told him that someone had warned her not to be around Prince Zen. Shirayuki says she will try to meet Zen with her talent. On the contrary, Prince Zen was very worried that someone would harm her. Shirayuki was thinking about everything when suddenly Count Haruka came to see her. He pressured her, and he pointed the sword at her and said that only those with high status appeared here. But she was not afraid and moved in front of that sword, startling him because her steadfastness was very similar to that of the prince. At this moment, Prince Zen appeared. He criticized Haruka's voluntary actions and reminded him not to be recidivated if he did not want to affect his position. The assassin also found her very interesting, so he would not do anything anymore. His name is Obai, and he is a mysterious person in the palace. Shirayuki then told the prince that she would try her best to make court herbalist here and hope to help the prince. That made Prince Zen very happy. Today is the day of the palace's selection contest. Shirayuki also came, and suddenly she saw someone's appearance and chased after him. It was the boy she saw in the pharmacy. Shirayuki found him very knowledgeable about the drugs. That made her feel very interesting. The boy was embarrassed when she approached and rushed away. Prince Zen also came to find her to see her taking the exam. The chief of this contest is Garak. In this contest, each person will have to take care of a small herbal garden, and after a while, they will evaluate the results. Shirayuki then went to her herbal garden, where everything was designed very well. 
Prince Zen peeked at her, working hard. Suddenly, Zen discovered anyone was here. He was alert. Shirayuki saw him startled. At this moment, the followers locked both of them in the garden. The prince was very worried if anyone came to discover the two of them together. She asked the prince why he was startled. The prince lied, saying that he just accidentally passed here. When the two of them were talking, she saw that the flowers had planted a strange phenomenon. After checking, the water source was found. After thinking about it for a while, the problem lies in a tree variety that causes toxins in the water. She asked Zen to lock the water source, and both of them treated the soil and plants. The next day, everything was fine. Garak came to check and was surprised to see Zen also here. Some contestants had bad actions to eliminate their opponents in the competition and Shurayuki was harmed. Fortunately, the prince was also here. Garak reminded the prince not to do so, but the prince came here to voluntarily help her. Garak announced that she had passed this exam because he realized that she was quite close to the prince and that she was also very talented. Garak will let her work under the supervision of a court herbalist named Ryu. Garak then took her to Ryu, and from now on she will be his assistant. This boy was young and quiet, though they were both happy to get acquainted. Shurayuki helped him make medicine. Suddenly someone came to get herbal, but he was startled to know that Ryu would make medicine. He told her that Ryu was rumored to only like to make poison, so he was very worried. Seeing him as ridiculous, Shurayuki explains to him that not all poisonous plants will produce poison. People who do not have a specialty should not be judged indiscriminately. Seeing her anger, he didn't dare say anything more. She told Ryu that he kept silent with those who did not understand would not solve the problem. She was angry with him and went to find Garak. Prince Zen saw and went to Ryu. Ryu thought that because he was young, she may not have faith in him, and that made Shurayuki upset. Zen advised him to frankly talk to her. At that time, Chief Garak gave her the prince's disease file. It may help Shurayuki better understand the condition of the prince and will also benefit her knowledge. She read and realized that Prince Zen was poisoned. The prince then created the immune system for himself, thinking that the prince was poisoned for her, making her very sad. Ryu saw her and hurriedly informed Prince Zen. Zen went to see Shurayuki, and he knew she had seen his medical record. Zen felt sad because he was worried about him, so he gently hugged her and comforted her. Shurayuki then went to Ryu to make peace. Seeing the two of them talk happily made the prince a little jealous. Today Shurayuki will go to a distant place to work. She was taken by Prince Zen because he was also working through this place. Upon arrival, Shurayuki says goodbye to Prince Zen and continued on her way. The prince's group then reached a fortress within the scope of the Clarion's kingdom. There was a soldier in front of them. Zen came here because this place did not send the report as usual. At this moment, Obai appeared and reported to the prince. He checked inside the fortress and found that everyone was asleep. Hearing that, Prince Zen went in to verify it himself. The soldier panicked and told the prince that this fortress was haunted by demons. Twenty days ago, everyone showed symptoms of gradual weakening without finding a reason, so they thought it was the devil's doing. Seeing that, he was worried because it was very dangerous for the prince here, but Zen didn't mind. That encouraged him. After that, everyone went to find the reason for this. They checked the arsenal, and there was almost nothing left. Everyone thought that maybe someone was playing tricks here and had stolen everything. Kiki thought Shurayuki could help the people here, so Zen sent Mitsuhide to pick her up. Later, Shurayuki came and helped everyone. She is also worried about the prince and hopes he should leave here to avoid getting infected but he wanted to be here with her. Mitsuhide reminds Zen of his identity. That makes it very difficult for Zen to think. Shurayuki wholeheartedly takes care of everyone. While she was talking to the soldier, she collapsed. It seemed she had the same symptoms as other sick people. She thought for a moment and realized that only the people in this room were infected. Looking around at everything, Shurayuki realized there was a problem with the logs being burned for heating. She immediately went out to call the prince and informed him that she had found the cause of this disease. Seeing that she had worked so hard made Zen very touched, and he wanted to resolve everything with her before leaving. Mitsuhide then reported that there was a group of thieves nearby. Obai accepted this job and quickly set out to investigate. When Shurayuki was tired and slumped at the table, Prince Zen informed her that everyone was fine. That made her feel very happy. Prince Zen and everyone here adjusted their work as before. But when he heard people say that Shurayuki had been working without resting, Zen was very worried. He immediately went to see Shurayuki and forced her to close her eyes for a moment, causing her to fall asleep. Seeing her so pale made Zen feel very sad. 
Then Zen and everyone went to the lair of the thieves who stole the weapons. They looked down on them because there were only a few people, but in just a few minutes, the sword was back in its sheath. Zen returned to see Shirayuki, and he asked her to pay attention to her health no matter what she did and not to hide things from him like that again. He thanked her and kissed her hand. Shirayuki was also happy to meet someone she could confide in. The next day, everyone went home happily. Shirayuki will go with Ryu to the herb garden to work today. Prince Zen knew she had a new uniform and identification card, which made him very happy. Zen told her they might not see each other less and thought she would be sad. But Shirayuki asked, sad about what? This made Zen a bit disappointed. Then the two continued their work. Zen found it strange because suddenly more soldiers were assigned to guard the palace. He went back to his room and called Obai to investigate everything. At this moment, a letter was sent. After Zen finished reading, he changed his mind and hurriedly went somewhere. At this time, Shirayuki was at the herbal garden and received an order from his highness. Ren and two people close to him arrived in front of a room. The person Zen will meet is the first prince, named Izana, and Zen's older brother. Shirayuki was also brought behind the curtain to listen to their conversation. Izana says Zen acted on his own at the fortress the other day and did not deal with the soldiers there because the soldiers there were subjective, giving the thieves a chance. Izana was able to strip Zen of his title as prince, startling Zen. Izana gave him two options, one was to punish the soldiers there, the other is losing his title of prince. When Zen was having a hard time thinking, suddenly Izana told him that Shirayuki was also here, surprising them. There was no other choice, but Zen was forced to make his choice according to his brother's wishes. Before leaving, Zen came to Shirayuki's side and told her he would see her again. Izana saw that Zen was interested in a girl like Shirayuki, so he was curious. Shirayuki didn't know how to explain. Izana allowed her to leave, but before that, he also told her that Zen's interest in her like that could cause him to lose his status. The next day, Prince Raj came to the Kingdom of Clarions at the invitation of Prince Izana to further cement the friendship between the two kingdoms. When Raj saw Zen coming out to welcome him, he was very scared. A royal banquet was held, and Mitsuhide and Kiki did not understand why Izana had called Shirayuki to listen to their conversation. At this time, Prince Izana arrived to preside over the party. Shirayuki was secretly watching from afar. At that moment, Obai appeared and pulled her closer to eavesdrop. The three princes talked to each other. Prince Izana mentioned that Raj was interested in the red-haired girl, making him choke on his wine. It turned out that Prince Izana's intention was to give Shirayuki to Raj. Zen loudly protested against his brother. Shirayuki heard that and was very confused. She and Obai left there. However, Prince Raj was afraid because he had been bullied by Zen before, so he refused to take Shirayuki away. He said he heard that Prince Zen had chosen her as his fiancée, shocking everyone. Zen pulled Raj away to talk. Raj told Zen that he had to say so, so that she would be allowed to be by his side, or if Zen didn't want to. He was still willing to take her as his wife. Zen flatly denied him taking her away. Zen returns and explains to Izana that there is no way she is his fiancé. At this time, Shirayuki is very worried about how her continued stay here will affect Prince Zen. But she also really wanted to be here to help the prince. She hurriedly ran to look for Zen but couldn't find him. She was returning disappointed when Prince Zen called her. She suddenly hugged Zen, making him very surprised. He guessed that she had something to say. Shirayuki told Zen about her concerns. Zen's brother asked her if she was worthy of being with Zen. After understanding the problem, Zen wanted her to hear the story about Izana. Since childhood, Izana has been a very talented person. He planned and arranged everything very satisfactorily. Zen has witnessed Izana's talent, and he admires him very much. He always wanted to stand side by side with his brother. Zen then led Shirayuki back to the palace. Zen was also very worried that she might encounter many difficulties in the future, but he encouraged her to be herself no matter what. And if anything happens, you can rest assured because Zen is by your side. The next day Prince Raj was taken to visit the herbal factory, but he was very worried and wanted to avoid having to go there. He immediately told his servant to investigate, for fear of meeting Shirayuki. Prince Raj was listless after the tour when suddenly he had a stomach ache and asked his servant to fetch water. At this time, Shirayuki was making herbal and preparing to go out. She heard the rumors about her relationship with Prince Zen and knew this would be inevitable. Zen went to see Izana to talk. He asked for a sword fight to both train and talk about the problem that Zen was wondering about. Zen asked Izana why he talked about her like that. Izana said that there are many girls out there to build relationships with the kingdom. Why did you choose this red-haired girl? 
If you choose her, you will definitely face many rumors, but Zen still firmly chooses Shireyuki. Zen's words didn't seem to bother Izana. Raj was struggling outside when he suddenly encountered Shireyuki. The conversation seemed a bit tense. Raj was about to leave when he had a stomach ache. He grabbed the water bottle from Shireyuki's hand, but Shireyuki stopped him because it was topical herbal. At this moment, his servant returned and told him to get a checkup first. Izana appears from behind and tells Shireyuki to return to Prince Raj. But she was steadfast and chose to stay here. Seeing her so determined, Izana was quite interested and kissed her forehead. Prince Raj has left, each person has their own thoughts deep inside them. Zen has a concern in his heart. Rumors about Shureyuki being Prince Zen's fiancé have spread. Maybe someone will come and cause trouble for Shureyuki. Zen was very worried, so he sent Obai to protect her. While Shureyuki was working, Kiki and Obai came to find her. Kiki had given Obai to her, and she had the right to give him orders. Obai and she worked together in Ryu's herb garden. They both brought the herbs to the basement for storage. Obai asked her if she wanted Zen to not be a prince. That made her unhappy and reminded him. Mitsuhide and Zen heard that. They were then invited by Garak to try the new potion. After drinking, they realized it was alcohol. So Shureyuki was drunk. Zen is thinking very hard about what Obai just said. Mitsuhide realized Zen was preoccupied with this. Since he was a child, Zen had always been alone, so Prince Izana sent Mitsuhide to serve him. Even so, Zen still wants to be himself and doesn't want anyone to follow him. He has known and played with a friend since childhood, and the two of them are very close. But meeting him must always be secret because their identities are different. At that moment, Zen just wished he wasn't a prince himself. At that time, Mitsuhide secretly followed the two, and he realized that the guy had a very suspicious look, so he was very worried about the prince. He told everything to Prince Izuna, and Izuna was also quite worried because Ren was at a very impetuous age. That night, Zen sneaked out to meet his friend. Seeing him injured, Zen was very worried. Suddenly, a group of strangers appeared and surrounded Zen. It turns out that Zen's friend and these guys want to capture Zen to lure Prince Izuna to appear. Prince Izuna and Mitsuhide have arrived. They hated Prince Izuna very much for destroying their family. But Prince Izuna only destroyed the corrupt people, and these people came for revenge. At this time, they were angry and wanted to take down Prince Izuna, but he and Mitsuhide handled them easily. Zen's friend pointed the arrow at Zen. He had no way back anymore. He was very jealous of Zen because Zen was born in luxury and he himself had a miserable life. Luckily, Mitsuhide was able to block the arrow in time and knock him out. Zen was very sad because his best friend was in this situation. He wished that if Zen wasn't a prince, then things would be different. His sad tears were the last image Zen saw. Mitsuhide realized that Prince Zen had to shoulder everything with his status. Shireyuki woke up from her drunkenness and wanted to go somewhere. Obai followed her and didn't know where she was going. At that moment, Obai realized someone was following her, so he pulled her away. He told her to wait a moment and then go back to deal with the stalker. He was recording everything about Shureyuki for someone and refused to confess. Obai handed him over to the soldiers to deal with. He told Shureyuki that she was being stalked because of rumors that she was Zen's fiancé. She thought about Zen being punished by Izana for not taking care of the soldiers at the fortress. She was very worried that something would happen to everyone there and wanted to go there. Obai realized that Shureyuki and Sen had one thing in common, always getting involved in every problem, no matter what happened to them. Obai said he could help her get there, but he said he had just returned from there and everyone there was fine. He also brought back a notebook recording everything there, making her feel very reassured. She thanked Obai and returned happily, but Shureyuki was still drunk and fell down. Luckily, Obai was able to catch her. Obai found observing Prince Zen and Shureyuki very interesting, and carried her back to her room. Kiki informs Prince Zen that Shureyuki is drunk. Zen immediately ran to find her and found them on their way back. Obai says that someone was following Shureyuki but was dealt with by him. Hearing that, Zen felt somewhat reassured. After the two took her back to her room, they then talked together. Zen thanked Obai for helping Shureyuki feel at ease about the incident at the fortress. He gave Obai his identification card. Now Zen will trust the people he comes into contact with because, although Obai is a mysterious person, he always listens and handles everything with his conscience. Everything Obai did made Zen feel that this person was worth trusting. Zen always respects the people he has chosen and will be stronger to protect them. Work in the herbal garden still passed peacefully. Obai and Shuriyuki also understand and get closer. Ryu was so focused on his work that he didn't hear other people's calls. Suddenly, a beautiful bird flew down to Ryu, startling him. That bird belongs to a black-haired girl. 
Obai and Shirayuki come to get to know her and are surprised that she can control this bird so well. Everyone knows she came here to see Zen. She introduced her name as Kihil and said that the bird was her friend named Popo. She comes from an island in this kingdom, and this bird only lives there. This bird helps people here a lot, from finding rare fruits or helping fishermen find fish. But Kihil is sad because the island where she was born and survived belongs to a new lord. The lord and his friends hunted the birds, even though the people objected to this. But he ignored her and told her to speak with Zen instead. That's why Kihil came here to find Zen. But she was worried because she thought all royal families were the same. Shirayuki tells her Zen is not that kind of person. But when Kihil came to meet Prince Zen, things were not easy. The settlement between the lord and the people had to be negotiated by both sides because the territory there belonged to Viscount Blaker. Shirayuki was a bit sad after hearing Obai describe the negotiation like that. Suddenly, she came up with an idea. Prince Zen also had a hard time thinking about this because he couldn't help Kihil. At this time, Shirayuki went to Zen and told him her idea. Zen called Kihil to come and negotiate with her about letting this bird serve the purpose of using them for communication, which would ensure that this species is preserved. They will not be hunted anymore. But the prince's request was to let the bird perform in front of everyone. Kihil immediately went to ask Shirayuki for help in this matter, and she also agreed. The next day, the performance took place. The time has come, Kihil releases her bird, and it flies to the location where Shirayuki is waiting. At this time, at Shirayuki's place, Viscount Blaker was also there. He wants Shirayuki to make this show a failure. If she agrees to help him, he will help her get rid of all the rumors between her and the prince. But she immediately refused, making him very angry. He snatched the bell she was wearing, which was used to call the bird. He locked her in her room and insulted her for being a commoner. Ignoring those words, Shirayuki opened the window and jumped into the sea. Obai was going up when he was startled to see her jumping down, and he quickly jumped down after her. The bird arrived, but they needed that bell to call it. They searched for the bell under the sea but still couldn't find it. Seeing the bird keep flying around in the same position, Shirayuki immediately realized the bell was there. On the other side, everyone was very worried because time was running out. They thought they had failed, but suddenly the bird returned with the bell. Prince Zen announced that he would use this bird for the kingdom, making Kihil feel very happy. At this time, Zen was also informed that Shirayuki was injured, so he rushed to her. When he arrives, he learns that Viscount Blaker has been convicted of bribing Shirayuki. Zen went up to find her and was very worried about her. He said she was stupid to be so reckless, but it was that personality that made him love her. Zen gave Shirayuki a kiss that surprised her. Zen realized he had gone too far. He apologized to her while Shirayuki was stunned. Everyone returned to the palace. After that, she felt very shy every time she met Zen. These people wonder what is between them. Obai asked her curiously, and she was startled and ran away. Zen went to the island where Kill lived to discuss with the people about using this bird for the kingdom. But the people here want Viscount Blaker to apologize and compensate for the damage. Zen has a hard time thinking but will try to make this deal happen. But after realizing Prince Zen's sincerity, the clan had agreed to this transaction. That night, everyone on the island happily held a party. Mitsuhide went to see the prince and wanted to know what happened between him and Shirayuki. Zen confesses that he kissed her, making Mitsuhide very curious. Zen said that he had feelings for her for a long time. But it seemed like she was still confused, so she didn't reciprocate his feelings. Shirayuki is trying to work to forget Zen's kiss. Ryu saw that she looked troubled, but she didn't say it, so he told her to try writing it on paper. She planned to go into the forest to calm her mind, and Obai also followed her. At this moment, Zen returned. He saw Shirayuki looking awkward and did not want to face him. Obai immediately told her to run into the forest to avoid Zen, making Zen very angry. Obai says that the one who made her run away was Zen, making Zen realize something. Zen will go see Shirayuki to let her know these feelings. He caught up with her and wanted her to hear the words from his heart. He said that no matter what happened, as long as she was here, everything would always be peaceful. Shirayuki felt Zen's sincerity. She knew her feelings had been for Zen for a long time, and she said she loved him too. Zen knows this girl has had to face many difficulties to be with him. He vowed to use his body to stay by her side and protect her. The kiss they gave each other was proof of that love. Today, the palace was very bustling. Shirayuki wondered why so many people came to the palace today and had so much fun. Derek explains that today is the day the palace opens. All people are allowed to come here to visit. Shirayuki was watching everyone when suddenly Zen pulled her away. He disguised himself as a soldier and came here just wanting to meet her. They were passionately flirting with each other when Zen knew his friends were watching in the background. 
Even though work is very busy, Zen and everyone will still go on inspections to experience the feeling with the people. Everyone had fun in this festive atmosphere. Mitsuhide revealed to Shirayuki that Zen said he would choose to follow the path she would choose. That made her very happy. Later, Zen had to prepare to meet his people, so he told Obai to pay attention to her. Obai suddenly gave her a hairpin, surprising her. Zen and Izana appear, they are very popular with their people. Shirayuki looked at Zen from above, her mind had many thoughts. Later, during a theater performance, Ryu and Shirayuki had to treat a girl with an injured foot. She was very worried because the show was about to start, and something like this happened. The troop leader saw that Shirayuki had very special red hair, so he asked her to act instead. So Shirayuki wore the costume to perform this play. Prince Zen also came to see the play and was stunned when he saw how beautiful she was. Shirayuki wanted to hide her hair from the audience, but the troop leader was planning something. At this time, Shirayuki went up to perform. After everyone watched, they saw that the troop leader wanted to do something. He wanted to reveal her hair to increase her appeal to the audience. Thinking that her hair would be exposed, Zen suddenly had an idea and quickly ran away. He appeared on stage as a mysterious knight, protecting the princess. Shirayuki was surprised but also thought he was cool. Obai told her that Zen always protected her, even her hair, and did not allow others to touch it. The play went well, and she was very happy to be able to join Zen on stage like that. At this time, Zen realized she had a strange hairpin and learned that it belonged to Obai. This made Zen a little jealous, but he also found it suitable for her. Suddenly, Shirayuki held Zen's hand and kissed it, surprising him. Suddenly, there was a commotion outside. Shirayuki went out to look and saw many lanterns being released into the sky. Zen told her it was everyone's job to end the festival. The two returned to look at the lanterns together in the beautiful night sky. Meanwhile, Shirayuki's kidnapper named Mahara in season 1 has returned, and he is planning something. A new day with Shirayuki's busy work. Today everyone will clean everything in the library. Ryu was writing a book when a gust of wind blew away all the papers. Obai passed by and saw Ryu wandering around under a tree. Turns out the papers were stuck on it. Obai carried Ryu on his shoulders so he could retrieve them. Then the two happily returned to the office. Prince Zen also worked like crazy knowing that Shirayuki was also working very hard. Later, Zen and Kiki went out when Zen suddenly saw Izana secretly observing. He determined to be stronger to stand beside him. Obai and Ryu also just returned. Obai seems to really like the flowers that Shirayuki planted. At this time, Shirayuki was struggling to carry the things and when Obai quickly helped her. There seemed to be a lot of work so she hurriedly left. Before Obai left, Ryu gave him some plant seeds because he heard Obai liked the flowers. Zen went to Garak's office to ask for some medicine and also to meet his lover, but she wasn't done yet. Later, after the cleaning was completed, Garak told Shirayuki that Prince Zen was waiting for her. She went to her room to rest and saw Zen sleeping. He grabbed her hand and kissed it, making her blush. Mitsuhide comes to find Zen for work. Although their time together was short, Zen cherished the moment he met her. She was also sobbing in her heart. Prince Izano was working when a letter arrived from the kingdom of Tanbaran. After reading it, he found it very interesting. Obai went to meet Ryu to return the seeds, with the excuse that he didn't know how to plant them and that he might have to go on a long trip. But Ryu told him to keep it. He should plant it so he can have the memory of returning soon to see the flowers bloom. At this time, Shirayuki passed by, and Obai saw that the flower pot she was holding had cut all the flowers. She explained that cutting it would help the tree survive better, but the seeds she planted still lacked blue seeds. In Obai's hand there was a blue seed, so he immediately hid it. Mitsuhide now rushes to find her. Everyone knows Mahara's name and says he will return to visit Zen and Shirayuki. He planned to do something. That made Zen very worried. Suddenly, he appeared and talked to Shirayuki. Zen was also there and was very angry. He tells them that there is a blonde named Kazuki who knows Shirayuki because of her red hair. He will come find you. And Mahara came here just to ask Zen for some spending money, which made Zen mad. Mahara said that the blonde had some hidden meaning when mentioning Shirayuki, making everyone wonder. Prince Izana called Zen and Shirayuki over. He told Shirayuki that Prince Raj had invited her to his kingdom for a dance party. It seems like the relationship between his country and other kingdoms is getting bigger, and Shirayuki is still being targeted by him. Zen is angry when he learns that Izana wants Shirayuki to go to that dance. But now Tanburan's power is growing, so diplomacy there will be inevitable. 
With no other choice, Shuriyuki had to go to that dance. Zen asks Izana for permission to send someone to follow her. Zen returns to his room and decides to send Mitsuhai to protect her. Shuriyuki was then taken to another room to prepare to learn etiquette for the upcoming dance. This was really sudden for her. Shuriyuki was diligently learning to dance. Obai stopped by to visit her and she immediately asked him to be her dance partner because her teacher had swollen feet. But Obai was on duty to observe Mahara, so he just stopped by to give her things and then left. Prince Zen and his two servants are looking for clues about someone named Kazuki. Meanwhile, Obai was monitoring Mahara and also looking to see if Kazuki appeared. If Kazuki tried to endanger Zen and Shurayuki, Obai would immediately finish him off. Prince Zen is wondering about the day Shurayuki will have to go to Tanbaran Kingdom. He went to practice swordplay to clear his mind. He was really uneasy about letting her go. Suddenly, Obai held a sword and challenged Prince Zen to a duel because Obai wanted to be the one to protect Shurayuki. Zen knew letting Obai protect Shurayuki was the best choice, so after the sword battle, he accepted Obai's request. Shurayuki was reading a book when suddenly Zen came to find her and told her that the person who would protect her would be Obai. Even though Zen couldn't bear to let her go, the situation couldn't change anymore. Shurayuki knew Zen would be sad, but she always remained optimistic. She said goodbye to Zen and returned to her room when Zen suddenly hugged her from behind. Shurayuki understands that and cherishes the times they are together. The next morning, while the carriage was waiting, Obai helped her carry her luggage and told her that Prince Zen was actually the one who wanted to go with her. Heizuka will also be accompanying her on this trip, making both of them a bit confused. Zen and everyone else came out to see them off. Before leaving, Shuriyuki wanted to borrow something from Zen, and he lent her a small watch. Everyone was also surprised when Prince Izana also came to see them off. Zen then ruined to Izana because he was surprised when Izana also came to see them off. Izana tells Zen to rest assured about her. It was her eyes that said it. During Shuriyuki's trip, Heizuka advised her to act carefully in the Tanbaran Kingdom because the two countries are currently establishing very good diplomacy. Shuriyuki also understood that. Shuriyuki finally returns to her country. Heizuka took her there and then returned. Noticing that Shuriyuki was still wearing the hairpin he gave her, Obai was surprised. Both of them continued to enter the royal capital. Returning to her hometown made Shuriyuki very excited. Prince Reizi came out to welcome the two of them very solemnly. Seeing that Raj had changed completely from before surprised Shurayuki. But when it came time to talk face to face, Raj didn't know what to say. Obai introduces himself to Raj, saying he is Shurayuki's bodyguard. Then Raj and Shurayuki drank tea together to chat. But Raj didn't know what to say, so she asked permission to go out for a walk. Whenever he faced her, he was confused and didn't know what to say. Shuriyuki confided to Obai about her childhood when she was here and had many memories. Even though she now wanted to go home to visit everyone, she had to finish things here. Suddenly, Raj came and boldly told her to take her around. Shuriyuki also happily agreed. On Prince Zen's side, he was still reinforcing his people to find Kazuki. Prince Raj is showing her around when Obai tells them both that there are many people watching. Prince Raj was startled to learn that the servants and soldiers were also too curious, so he took them another way. He led the two through the tunnel. Shurayuki wondered if Prince Raj knew the way, but he confidently said he had gone many times. But they kept walking and still couldn't see the way out, and in the end, they lost their way. They saw a strange door, but had to pull a chain to open it. Both pull together, but that's the trap here. Luckily, Obai was able to save Raj in time. The three continued to move. After a while, Prince Raj was discouraged, but receiving encouragement from Shurayuki made him regain his spirit immediately. Obai discovered something suspicious behind him. There were two kids secretly following them. It seems these two are Prince Raj's younger brothers. Meanwhile, Prince Zen is talking to Kihil about training birds. Mitsuhai went to see Prince Izuna and found him watching Zen work. Prince Izuna reveals to Mitsuhai that he is testing Zen and Shurayuki. He wants to know if they can really overcome the storm to be together. On this side, Obai had to carry Raj across the puddle. Obai discovered something strange and immediately turned back. After a hard time avoiding the trap set by the two kids, he also caught them. He brings them to Raj. The girl's name is Rona, and the boy's name is Eugenia. They are the younger siblings of Prince Raj. They know the exit of this tunnel, but they want to follow Raj to see how he flirts with women. Finally, everyone made it outside. Shurayuki was delighted because this place was so beautiful. The two kids discovered Raj secretly looking at Shurayuki, startling him. These two kids know that since Raj understands Shurayuki better, he has gradually matured. Meanwhile, Zen receives a notification that Kazuki has been discovered and that Mahara has also disappeared. 
It turned out that Mahara had come to see Kazuki. These two guys are planning to capture Shirayuki again. Prince Zen came to look for Mahara and saw him returning to his room. He told Zen that Kazuki's accomplices had knocked him down into the sea. That guy was coming towards Shirayuki, making Prince Zen very frightened. Zen immediately mobilized his soldiers to get there as soon as possible, and he also took Mahara with him because he knew them. Before leaving, Zen went to meet Izana to inform her. Prince Raj is actively training to become a respected leader. The two kids thought Raj had a crush on Shureyuki, that's why he changed like that. Raj's servants kept pairing him with Shureyuki, but Raj always denied it because he was afraid of Prince Zen. Prince Raj wanted her to be happy and comfortable in his palace, but he saw that she was still shy and thought he was a stupid prince. Shureyuki told Prince Raj that the next time she returned, she would love to hear the people proud of him. This makes Raj very motivated. Meanwhile, the two kids want to keep Shureyuki with Raj, but Obai stopped them. Rona seemed to discover that Obai was always paying attention to Shureyuki, so she created a situation to test him. Seeing that these two kids were so annoying, Raj pulled them out. He was trying so hard to create a good image in front of Shureyuki that he had to write down his action plan on paper. Tomorrow, there will be a dance festival at the palace. It was said that Shureyuki only knew how to dance to soft music, so Raj tried the violin for her. Shureyuki really likes this song, so he will use it. With two days left until the end of this trip, Shureyuki is missing Zen, while Obai is thinking about the moment he held Shureyuki's hand. It seems like he has some fluctuations in his mind. At this time, a group of strangers appeared in the sea on a large boat. Looks like they're about to do something. The dance party took place. Rona plots for Raj to be with Shureyuki. Obai comes to call Shureyuki to prepare for the dance. She looks so gorgeous. Just as the two were talking, they received a letter from Zen. Meanwhile, Zen asks Izana for permission to go to Shureyuki, but Izana does not agree. Zen's letter telling her that Kazuki was coming to her stunned the two. At that moment, that person came to them. Zen is still determined to go there and he says he will marry her, surprising Izana. Izana agreed to let Zen go, but if it had any impact on the two kingdoms, he would not be allowed to take her back. Kazuki appeared, and his accomplices rushed to hold Obai. They quickly captured Shureyuki. While Obai was caught off guard by the two kids, he was knocked unconscious, and they took Shureyuki away. The watch that Zen gave her also fell and broke. When Prince Raj heard the news, he urgently sent people to search, but they still haven't been found. Raj is having a headache, worrying about her, and not knowing how to talk to Zen. Obai has regained consciousness, but information about the kidnappers is still not available. The first thing is to calmly handle everything. Obai realizes there is an item Zen sent to Shureyuki. It was a bell used to call Kihol's messenger bird. Zen is now on his way and is very worried. Prince Raj blamed himself for inviting her here, which is why this happened. Sekaki encouraged him to calmly handle the situation, it was not too late. Zen has arrived. He has grasped the situation happening here. The two princes met to discuss. They've both accepted responsibility, but right now they need to focus on finding her. At this time, someone came to announce that Obai had gone ahead to search for Shureyuki himself. After everyone looked carefully into the matter, they found that there was a group of suspicious people called Seize Talon who specialized in hunting for special people or outstanding talents. Suddenly, Raj's father, the king of Tanbaran, summoned the two princes. At this time, the two kidnappers were stopping to rest when someone appeared behind Kazuki. The king allowed Zen to act as a prince in his country. That made Zen very grateful. Everyone prepares to leave. Prince Raj was a bit scared but still wanted to go with Zen for his own responsibility as well as for her. Both princes are determined to bring her back safely. The kidnapper returns without seeing Kazuki and is attacked by Obai. Obai controlled him to ask about Shureyuki. The kidnapper realized there was an unusual mark left by someone and was very worried about Kazuki. There is no other way, but Obai will force him to lead him to find the mysterious new arrival. At this time, Shureyuki woke up in a room. Kazuki was also knocked unconscious and lay right next to her. Kazuki realized someone had brought them to this place. That person was a woman, she was Yumehebai, the leader of Seize Talon. Previously, Kazuki was her subordinate, but now he has separated in different ways. Kazuki objected and was knocked away by her. Shureyuki felt scared before this woman. She threatened them both. The situation at this time made Shureyuki very worried. Both will find a way to escape from here. Even though the door was still open, Kazuki realized they were locked on a boat. The upper door was locked. Shureyuki looked around and discovered that there were useful items to escape this place. The two guards above were chatting when they discovered smoke below the cell. They quickly rushed down to check, 
Kazuki had already ambushed them and knocked them unconscious. Kazuki was very surprised at Shirayuki's intelligence. After observing that there was no one outside, they decided to run quickly to escape. But Yumehabai was waiting outside and stopped them. Meanwhile, Obai is encountering people from the Mountain's Lions, which is also the gang Kazuki is currently participating in. Zen received Obai's message. Prince Raj will also come and will send a group of soldiers specializing in handling robbers to help. Kiel's homing bird will help them reach Obai. Obai is pretending to join the Mountain's Lions to find where Shurayuki is being held. At this time, Shurayuki and Kazuki were tied up. Kazuki still decided to oppose, but did nothing. Yumehabai wants to know why the Mountain's Lions want Shurayuki. At this time, Obai and the members of the Mountain's Lions were on their way when Prince Zen caught up. Zen immediately sent Obai a punch for failing to protect her. But Zen temporarily forgives him because he tried his best to find Shurayuki. Sasaki recognized the two men accompanying Obai as the commanders of the Mountain's Lions, so they quickly ran away. But they were immediately stopped by Prince Zen's men. The Mountain's Lions often rob the rich to give to the poor. They see that Shurayuki has a very special hair color, so they want to kidnap her to protect her from C's Talon. After some negotiation, both sides decide to cooperate to save Shurayuki. It took them a while to get close to their lair, but everyone still couldn't come up with any good plans. At this moment, Kiki has a plan. Kazuki was being tortured to reveal his purpose, but he still refused to say anything. She couldn't investigate anything, so she locked them both in the room. It seemed like she decided to take the two of them to their main lair. Just as they were helplessly banging on the door, another person was arrested. Shurayuki was startled to realize it was Kiki. Kiki purposely came here to protect Shurayuki. Mahara suggested that everyone should attack their main base first to surprise them. Since Mahara showed them the robber's lair, Zen had to pay him. Prince Raj agreed to pay Mahara any price as long as he could save Shurayuki. Kiki reveals to Shurayuki that Zen also came to save her, making her feel reassured. Kiki gives the bell to Shurayuki, using it as a signal to Zen's team. At this time, Zen's group is on the way to the enemy's lair. Prince Raj also sent orders to recruit men at the port to help attack the enemy's lair. But it seems Raj is not liked by the people, so no one wants to go. Even so, Prince Raj himself will convince everyone. But he has never stood in front of his people to speak before, so he is very confused. After calming down, he spoke sincere words to ask everyone to help the kingdom. Zen's team and the mountain's lions are approaching in two directions. At this time on the boat, the kidnappers saw many strange boats. Yumihabai was startled to learn that those boats belonged to the traders whom Prince Raj had asked for help. Shurayuki was taken to the ship's deck, and she also saw the bird that announced her location to everyone. At this time, Prince Raj was on a royal ship. People have a different view of their country's prince. Prince Raj informed the robbers that if they wanted peace, they should immediately release the girl they had kidnapped. Yumehabai knew she could not resist the army, so she ordered her troops to retreat. Raj's team decides to chase, but there is a big obstacle ahead. There are many giant whirlpools in the sea. If they tried to chase anymore, the boats would be in danger. But C's Talon's boats were able to get through the whirlpool because they knew the way. Yumehabai and her army have returned to seize Talon's main base. Prince Raj also realized how to overcome the whirlpool, so he continued moving forward. While Yumehabai was confident because no one was chasing her, she suddenly received news that a boat was approaching. That was Prince Raj's boat, but it was severely damaged after passing through the whirlpool. The prince was still very brave, bringing courage to his soldiers. He crashed his boat into the enemy's boat. However, he is still scared to death. Kiki saw that the opportunity had come and created a way for the two to escape, but was still captured by Yumehabai. Fortunately, Prince Zen's team came to the rescue in time. Yumehabai has captured Shurayuki and is holding her hostage. Seeing Zen so determined with sharp eyes scared her a bit. At this moment, Obai attacked, and Shurayuki was able to escape. Zen quickly took her away while Obai held her back. Just then, the mountain's lions arrived, causing her to panic. They rushed into battle. At this moment, Zen brought Shurayuki to safety, and he hugged her tightly. After many hardships, fears, and worries, they were reunited. He told her to go to a safe place while he had something to deal with. Sees Talon has been cornered. Zen goes over them and solves them with everyone. Yumehabai finally suffered defeat. Prince Zen and everyone else returned safely. Shurayuki was very happy and touched. The leader of the mountain's lions, Mukazi, appears. He wanted to invite Zen and everyone to stay for a while. Shurayuki is surprised to learn that the leader of the mountain's lions is her father. Zen everyone accepts Mukazi's invitation to the mountain's lions. Everyone here was very happy to party when they heard that C's Talon had been defeated. 
During the conversation, Mukazi introduced himself as Shurayuki's father. Shurayuki felt surprised because she thought her father had died, according to rumors. But for some reason, he did not return to his hometown, so people rumored that he was dead. He said his wife was once married to his uncle, but he stole her and was deported. He and his wife ran away here and gave birth to Shurayuki. But then his wife also passed away. Because he was so sad, he sent Shurayuki to his grandparents to take care of. When he met Shurayuki, he realized she was his daughter. Kazuki invited Shurayuki to stay here and live a peaceful life, but she refused and wanted to return to the place where her lover was. Later, Shurayuki asked Zen for permission to go see Obai. She was about to say something to Obai, but he stopped her and said he only had the responsibility to protect her. It seemed Obai had realized that he had exceeded his authority as a bodyguard and wavered before her. So he only hoped that he would always be her protector. Shurayuki noticed that, and she was also happy. They both returned to the mountain's lion's party and enjoyed cups of wine and delicious food together. Zen was sitting alone when Shurayuki's father came to talk. At this time, Shurayuki did not see Zen anywhere and immediately went to look for him. She overheard Zen and her father's conversation. He knows Shurayuki loves him, and he asks Zen how he feels. Zen says he loves her too. After chatting for a while, Zen returned to his room and saw Shurayuki. He knew she heard everything, which made him embarrassed. He takes her back to her room, and she wants to be with Zen a little longer. They closed the door and sat leaning against each other, telling each other funny stories. Then she fell asleep on Zen's shoulder. Zen carried her to bed, watched her sleep, and then placed a kiss on her lips. The next morning, everyone prepared their luggage to leave. Her father and everyone went out to see them off. He was happy that his daughter had chosen her own path. Everyone returned to Tanburun Palace. Prince Raj was very happy but did not dare to take the risk because Zen was right next to Shurayuki. That evening, a dance party will be held. Obai would still be the one to take her to the party. At this time, Rona and Eugenia intended to continue their strategy, but were discovered by Raj. The melodious music was played as Shurayuki wished. Prince Raj appeared next to her. She happily invited him to a gentle dance. After today, she will return to Zen. She also invited him to come over to her place to play as a friend. The next morning, everyone departed, and Shurayuki found everything peaceful. Everyone was on their way back when it suddenly started to rain heavily. They decided to find an inn in town to spend the night. While waiting to check in, another girl also walked in. Then everyone ate and drank together. The three young men also took advantage of the opportunity to have fun moments together. The girl they met earlier came closer to talk to and seduce Mitsuhide. He turned to Kiki for help, but Kiki ignored him. So Mitsuhide said no to her. This girl is planning something. That night, Obai sat on the roof alone, and that girl appeared. They seemed to know each other. Her name is Toru. She belongs to a specialized group hired to carry out large and small missions, and Obai has participated with her before. Now she invites Obai to do some missions. For some reason, he accepted. Everyone was worried when Obai said he would return late, making Prince Zen quite angry. Obai and Toru arrived at a house. They broke in and took care of the people inside. After finishing, Toru accidentally fell down. Luckily, Obai caught her in time. Toru wanted Obai to return to the team, but Obai refused. Now he himself has a peaceful and happy place to return to. Zen and everyone else found Obai and were very angry. Zen didn't want him to go back to that path again. If he does it again, he will be kicked out of the palace. Obai realized his mistake, and he also realized that being with Zen and Shurayuki brought the most enjoyable and peaceful feeling. Everyone returned to the palace. Zen is a bit jealous because Shurayuki has never shared a horse with him. But as a prince, he has to maintain an image when going out. At this time at the palace, Prince Izana saw that Zen had many invitations to go on dates. He sees that there is going to be a good drama to watch. Zen and everyone returned to the palace, and Shurayuki was happy to see everyone again. Ryu was also very surprised because she had returned. They happily worked together again. Prince Zen had a headache when looking through the list of girls that Heizuka brought. This situation is a forced choice. After careful consideration, Zen decided to meet only one of them. This rumor has spread widely. When Shurayuki heard the news, she also felt very confused. It was surprising that the person Zen wanted to see was Kiki. It seemed Zen wanted to do that just to counter his honor. Obai said they looked good together to tease Mitsuhide. Even though Mitsuhide said he didn't mind, his face looked serious. Obai went to find Shurayuki to tell her the truth, but he couldn't reveal that that girl was Kiki, so he couldn't tell. Kiki and Zen confide about the time before everyone knew each other. At that time, Kiki was always closed and only wanted to be alone. 
At that moment, Mitsuhide was hiding from a girl when he accidentally met Kiki. Zen came to find Mitsuhide and saw that they were in the same place, so he thought they were doing something shady. Zen then called Mitsuhide over for a sword practice session so that Mitsuhide and Kiki could get to know each other. But Mitsuhide did not recognize Kiki and thought Kiki was a baron. That first impression made Zen laugh. The meeting went smoothly and Prince Zen returned to work. But now he is also worried about how to explain it to Shureyuki. Obai said he met her and was about to talk about Kiki but stopped. Hearing that, Zen was angry because Obai didn't tell her that. There was no other way for Zen to quickly go and explain it to her. Luckily, Shureyuki always trusted and knew Zen would tell her everything. He and she had a happy moment together again. That night, Zen was working when Izana arrived. They confided in each other. Izana tells him he will get married soon, and Zen will too. He hoped Zen would make a wise choice so that his people would put their trust in their prince. Zen is very determined that the person he chooses is Shureyuki, the person who shares the same path as him. Zen wants it to be her. Seeing that Zen was determined, Izana said he would be Zen's ally, much to Zen's surprise. Zen was thinking about what Izana said. At this time, the maid was working above. But unfortunately, the blanket fell down just as Zen was passing by. Shureyuki and everyone were talking about Prince Zen when suddenly the maid ran to ask for help. Everyone arrived and saw that Zen appeared to have sprained his neck. The maids hastily apologized to Zen. Mitsuhide is looking for Garak to help, but he accidentally breaks a potion. He bent down to look, felt dizzy, and sat dazed. Everyone was wondering why Mitsuhide hadn't returned yet, but when he returned, everything he said and his actions were very formal and cool. Garak then explained that Mitsuhide had inhaled a hypnotic drug, which causes people to reveal their hidden emotions. Garak needs some time to prepare the antidote. Another side effect is that it causes him to overdo the problem. He was very worried about Zen's neck injury and forced Zen to treat it immediately. Shureyuki will be the one to heal Zen. She intended to take off Zen's shirt to apply the medicine, but he was embarrassed, so he took it off himself. The next day, Kiki came to look for Zen. But Mitsuhide appeared right behind her, causing her to fall. But he acted like a gentleman and caught her. Kiki felt so disgusted that she slapped his cheek. After that, Zen's every action was monitored, and he made a big deal out of it, making Zen very upset. Zen took the opportunity to escape, but was still caught. That day, Zen was very depressed. Meanwhile, Shuriyuki is trying to create an antidote for Mitsuhide. She went to the library to find more documents when suddenly Zen came because he wanted to see her. Zen shares that although Mitsuhide is a bit excessive, he always gives his best when he is with him. For Zen, Mitsuhide is also a very important friend. They were having feelings when suddenly the stack of books fell from above. At the critical moment, Mitsuhide rushed in to help them. Luckily, everyone is okay. Zen sees that Mitsuhide has struggled a lot, and he wants Shureyuki to cure Mitsuhide's illness soon. She then successfully created the antidote. After Mitsuhide recovered, he did not remember anything about the time he was hypnotized. But Obai recorded all of Mitsuhide's actions at that time, making him freeze. Garak and Ryu come to see a report on Shureyuki's recent work progress. After seeing how hard she worked and how talented she was, Shureyuki officially finished her internship and was appointed to become a court herbalist. Shureyuki was very happy, and everyone also congratulated her. The path she has chosen can finally lead her to walk alongside the prince. Izana informs Zen that tomorrow a messenger from the Tanbaran kingdom will visit. He heard that Shureyuki was loved by Prince Raj, so he was very interested in what would happen next. This got Zen thinking. While Shureyuki was working intently in the herb garden, suddenly, a pair of feet approached from behind. Obai appears, captures him, and discovers he is Mahara. Mahara came here as a messenger of the Tanbaran kingdom, surprising them quite a bit. He was instrumental in the campaign to defeat Seize Talon, so he was reinstated as a noble. But he was just a follower, and the real messenger was someone else. Shureyuki was also called to the prince and messenger's conversation. That messenger was Sasaki. Prince Raj has a gift delivered to her, a necklace with the title of friend of the royal family. It is a noble title. She was very surprised by that. With this title, she is like a messenger who can comfortably visit Tanbaran Palace. After the messenger left, Izana seemed very excited about it. He laughed because that title was a bit strange. Now she and the prince can stand side by side, and Izana wants to know what she plans to do with her relationship with Zen. Shureyuki returned to work when suddenly Sasaki came to her to talk. Turns out he wanted her to give Prince Raj a chance. Although Prince Raj was outwardly only said to be her friend, Sasaki knew that Raj wanted her to be his wife. He handed Shureyuki a letter that Prince Raj had sent her. 
In the letter, Raj only mentioned cherishing his friendship with Shureyuki. The title he gave her was also a shield to protect her. Shureyuki felt very confused. She went out to think about it and met Obai. Obai knew she was having trouble thinking about something, so he confided in her. Obai wants her to meet Zen to help her choose the right path for herself. She waited for a while, and then Zen appeared. At this time, Shuriyuki also confessed the decision in her heart. She wanted to be by Zen's side and wanted to be the one to walk with him. Zen was very happy to hear that. He also loved her very much and placed a kiss on her lips. He carried her and ran to a beautiful place to watch the sunrise.